امين والصلاه والسلام على سيد الانبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا وحبيب رب العالمين last week we went over the background of uh, hadith uh, the hadith of ka'b bin malik radiyallahu ta'ala an i mentioned how it's a lengthy hadith so probably maybe it'll take one more week after this week to get through the whole thing it's probably the longest hadith in riyadh al-salihin and it's a beautiful hadith imam bukhari mentions it i think four times imam muslim mentions it imam tirmidhi they all narrate this hadith and it's ka'b bin malik radiyallahu an speaking about his tawba and speaking about an incident in his life in his own words and it's um, heart wrenching when a person reads it sees what he went through and as i had mentioned you know when we were reading it in class so in the in the last year you read all of the the hadith books that hadith everyone the person reading all the students teachers everyone is crying why because of the just how powerful it is so khair inshallah we'll go through it mostly i'll just read a translate and add some comments here and there وكان من خبري so continuing from where we left off last time كعب رضي الله عنه says وكان من خبري from my story my you know my life or this incident حين تخلفت عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم when I stayed behind from رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم when في غزوة تبوك during the battle of Tabuk when رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم he told everybody that you know you need to come and Kaab is going to explain how Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam went about this and how he stayed back. Inni lam akun qattu aqwa wa la aysara minni hina takhallaftu anhu fi tilka al-ghazwa. He said there was never a time in my life that I was more strong nor was I more wealthy. He was at the prime of his life. Remember he said when this happened he was around 33 years old. At the time of the Hijra he was 24. This is in the ninth year. So this is about 33 years old. So it's the prime of a person's life and he said I was never more wealthy, right? So there are other times in his life when he was struggling maybe financially, maybe with his health, and other than the battle of Badr, he had accompanied Rasulullah Wasallam in every battle. Now over here he's saying everything is well, right? And I was never more wealthy and more healthy than when I stayed behind Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this battle. Wallahi, ma jama'atu qablaha rahilatayni qattu. Wallahi, I had never ever gathered two um, animals, you know, animals, rides, etc. Hatta jama'atuhuma fi tilka al-ghazwa. But I had two for this battle. There were times when you look at the battle of the Badr, uh, battle of Badr, three sahabis to one animal, right? Now Kaab radiallahu anhu himself, he has two. That's how well that he's doing. Alhamdulillah. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يُرِيدُ غَزْوَةً إِلَّا وَرَّا بِغَيْرِهَا so he said, and Rasulullah Sallallahu usual practice when there was a battle was that Rasulullah Sallallahu would do a thing called Tawriya. What he would say is, okay, we're going to go in this direction. Or what he would do is, he would set out in one direction. Let's say they wanted to go north for the battle. Rasulullah Sallallahu would start out by going southeast, he'd go in that direction for a few days, then he'd turn towards the north. Why? Because of Munafiqun in Medina. He didn't want his plans to be exposed. So Rasulullah Sallallahu would do this because there's khida'ah and there's, uh, you know, like the hadith that there's khida'ah in war and there's strategies in war that are imposed, right? However, hatta kanat tilka al-ghazwa. In this battle, Rasulullah Sallallahu did something different. فَغَسَاهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فِي حَرٍّ شَدِيدٍ وَاسْتَقْبَلَ سَفَرًا بَعِيدًا وَمَفَازًا وَاسْتَقْبَلَ عَدَدًا كَثِيرًا so now what Rasulullah Sallallahu did in this battle, why this battle is different is, remember, it's in the height of summer, right around harvest time. So it's extremely hot. And along with that, they're going very, very far. It's not near. It's almost to the border of the Byzantine Empire, to the border of Syria. And they're going to face a huge army, the army of Qaisar, right, of Hiraqal. At least that's what they thought that they were going to face. فَجَلَّ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ أَمَرَهُمْ لِيَتَأَهَبُوا أُهْبَةَ غَزْوِهِمْ فَأَخْبَرَهُمْ بِوَجْهِهِمُ so this time Rasulullah Sallallahu made it clear to the Muslims, this is where we're going so that they could prepare adequately, right? And he said, this is exactly where we're going so prepare adequately. وَالْمُسْلِمُونَ مَعَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ كَثِيرٌ And the Muslims that were with Rasulullah Sallallahu they were of a huge number. Now look, in the Battle of Badr, how many Muslims were with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? 330, right? Some say 15, some say 17. You could reconcile all the numbers, right? In the battle of Uhud, how many Muslims were there? There were 1,000, but remember at the beginning, one third of them they left, right? With, uh, uh, with Abdullah bin Ubay. So even less than that, about 700 Muslims in the battle of Uhud, right? 
When the Muslims ca- conquered Makkah, how many were there? About 10,000, right? Now at this time, Rasulullah Sallallahu has conquered the Arabian Peninsula. So with him, some narrators say there's 30,000 in this battle. Others say 40,000. Others say 70,000. You can reconcile the numbers. There's different ways of doing that. But khair, there's a huge number, okay? So now, وَلَا يَجْمَعُهُمْ كِتَابٌ حَافِظٌ uh, so and he didn't have any register in the time of Umar radiallahu anhu what they started to do was when there was a battle they would write down who all is going on in this battle they would record it at this time they didn't have any type of system to do that right and what it says yuridu bi dhalika diwan over here the narrator says that what he this he means a register qala ka'b ka'b radiallahu anhu coming back to what he said faqalla rajulun yuridu ay yatagabba ay yatagayyab illa dhanna anna dhalika sayakhfa bihi ma lam yanzil fihi wahy min allah and because there's no register or record of who's coming if a person wanted to avoid going to the battle they didn't have to worry most likely nobody would notice except if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam Specifically, that this person isn't going, right? It's for regular people. Abu Bakr wasn't there, Umar wasn't, Rasulullah says one notice. But for the average person, you wouldn't notice if a person was gone, right? And remember, one person, who did I say last week stayed back in this? Rasulullah says made Ali radiallahu anh stay back at this time, right? To watch the Muslims in Medina. وَغَزَى رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم تلك الغزوة حين طابت الثمار والظلال And he said, and when this happened, this was at the time of the harvest, the, f- the fruits were coming, right? And remember last year they had a bad harvest, and it's nice weather, والظلال, there's shades, people would go to their orchards and harvest, it's a good time of year. So Ka'ab رضي الله like anyone else, he said, فَأَنَا إِلَيْهَا أَصْعَرْ So I was inclined towards that, my heart was there, right? فَتَجَهَّزَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَالْمُسْلِمُونَ مَعَهُمْ But when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's order comes, the Muslims they obey. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Muslims they began to prepare. وَتَفِقْتُ أَغْدُ لِكَيْ أَتَجَهَّزَ مَعَهُمْ And I began to start. I wanted to also prepare. فَأَرْجِعُ وَلَمْ أَقْضِ شَيْئًا But I went back home. And I wasn't able to do everything. Every day I would go out with them to prepare. I'd be with them, but then I'd go back. I wouldn't have gotten anything done. وَأَقُولُ فِي نَفْسِي And I'd say to myself, أَنَا قَادِرٌ عَلَى ذَلِكَ I'm able to. I'm in a good uh, financial position. إِذَا أَرَدْتُ When I want to. There's a lesson for us as well. When a person feels totally unprepared to do something, what happens? You work really hard and you make sure and usually you, that person comes out first in the class, first on the test, arrives first at the destination. When a person thinks, I got this, I'll prepare whenever, what happens? That person usually ends up leaving late, getting to the place late, not doing well on the test, right? So we shouldn't have this complacency. When a person feels that they're unready, they're more likely to take the steps needed to make them ready and more, to allow them to exceed. Whereas when a person is confident that I'm ready, I'm, I'm prepared, I have everything I need, what happens at the last minute is, oh, I need this, I need this, I need this, next thing you know you're late, right? فَلَمْ يَزَلْ يَتَمَادَ بِي حَتَّى اسْتَمَرَّ بِالنَّاسِ الْجِدْ This kept happening. I kept delaying until the people were fully prepared. فَأَصْبَحَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ غَادِيًا وَالْمُسْلِمُونَ مَعَا So then Rasulullah صلى الله عليه decided that the next day they're going to depart. وَلَمْ أَقْضِ مِنْ جِهَازِ شَيْئًا Still I haven't prepared anything. ثُمَّ غَدَوْتُ فَرَجَعْتُ وَلَمْ أَقْضِ شَيْئًا That day also I went back home without preparing anything. فَلَمْ يَزَلْ يَتَمَادَ بِي حَتَّى أَسْرَعُوا وَتَفَارَتَ الْغَزْوُ Now Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, his army has left. And they've gone very far. فَهَمَمْتُ أَنْ أَرْتَحِلَ فَأُدْرِكَهُمْ You know like sometimes when you're going to a dawat, or you're going to a place, and there's a whole group of people going, or you know, where's... Brother Izzuddin and Brother Abbas, they always say, jump in my car, right? So you think, okay, there's five, six people going in one car, they're gonna slow everyone down, let them leave, I'm gonna go in my own car and I'll leave. This is what he thought. He said, well, the whole army will go, they'll be moving slowly. I'll go and I'll catch up to them alone, I have some, you know, leeway. I could leave a little bit late, I have some gunjaish. فَأَرْتَحِلُوا And then فَأُدْرِكَهُمْ I'll catch them. فَيَا لَيْتَنِي فَعَلْتُ I wish I did that. ثُمَّ لَمْ يُقَدَّرْ لِذَلِكَ لِي But it wasn't in my taqdeer, it wasn't in my qadr. فَتَفِقْتُ إِذَا خَرَجْتُ فِي النَّاسِ بَعْدَ خُرُوجِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَحْزُنُنِي أَنِّي لَا أَرَى لِي أُسْوَةً And he said, now when I went out, I would look around and I would be grieved. Why? Because I wouldn't see anyone like me with the people who stayed back from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What does he mean? إِلَّا رَجُلًا مَغْمُوصًا عَلَيْهِ فِي النِّفَاقِ Except for a hypocrite, 
or people who were accused of being hypocrites aw rajulan mimman adhara Allah ta'ala min al-du'afa or those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the end of 10th para in surah tawbah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you have an excuse you don't have to come out you're weak he's saying look i look at myself i'm not a munafiq i fought with rasulullah sallallahu in every battle before Rasulullah sallallahu came to Mecca, to Medina, I went to Aqaba and I pledged to Rasulullah sallallahu I was one of the first 70 people in Medina to accept Islam, to do bay'ah to Rasulullah sallallahu I'm no hypocrite. And along with that, he said, I'm not weak. I'm at the strongest point in my life. So there's no one like me. So now he's feeling, what's wrong with me? وَلَمْ يَذْكُرُنِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ حَتَّى بَلَغَ تَبُوكَ And he said, Rasulullah Sallallahu didn't remember me, he didn't realize that I wasn't there until we reached Tabuk. فَقَالَ وَهُوَ جَالِسٌ فِي الْقَوْمِ بِتَبُوكَ And he said, then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, while he was sitting with the people in Tabuk, you know, they got to Tabuk, there was actually no battle. This was a test. This was where Rasulullah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made clear who all the hypocrites were. Such a difficult battle at such a difficult time of the year. You have to leave your harvest behind, yet they all went out. It's crystal clear who is a true believer and who's a munafiq. There are about 80 people in Medina who made excuses and they stayed back. And now they go there and they didn't even have to fight. So now what happens? The Muslims, they stayed there for three, four weeks and that's the best time. When you travel with a teacher, with a scholar, with an elder, there's nothing to do. You know, you sit there, you sit in their company, they give good advice, you observe them, you get their du'as, etc. That's what the Sahaba are doing. They're enjoying their time with Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now Rasulullah says, and they're sitting in his majlis, he says, مَا فَعَلَ كَعْبُ بْنُ مالك? What happened to Ka'b bin Malik? فَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مِّن بَنِي سَلَمَةٍ A man from Bani Salama, which was the tribe of Ka'b bin Malik, he said, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ حَبَسَهُ بُرْدَاهُ That his two sheets, they held him back. وَالنَّظْرُ فِي عِطْفَيْهِ And him looking at his clothes. This is just a way, a figure of speech of saying, عُجُب This person is obsessed with himself. This person is conceited. This person is do, engaged in self-worship and conceit. So that's what one of his, you know, clansmen said. Immediately, فَقَالَ لَهُ مُعَاذَ بْنُ جَبَلٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ Mu'az bin Jabal رضي الله immediately. And this teaches as well, if somebody is being backbit or slandered in front of us, we should come to their defense. He said, بِئْسَ مَا قُلْتَ What a bad thing it is that you said. وَاللَّهِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ مَا عَلِمْنَا عَلَيْهِ خَيْرًا Ya Rasulullah, I don't know anything about Ka'ab bin Malik except for good. فَسَكَتَ Rasulullah says. So Rasulullah says, was silent after that. فَبَيْنَا هُوَا عَلَى ذَلِكَ رَآ رَجُلًا مُبْيَضًا يَزُولُ بِهِ السَّرَابِ And when they were in that situation, they saw a person who was, come, who was coming basically, you know when you're outside in the desert, I, mean, I haven't been there, but you see it in movies and this and that. You know, there's like a mirage and it's so hot, sometimes it looks like there's waves in the back, right? So there was a man in white who was walking and he appeared to be moving side to side. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ كُنْ أَبَا خَيْثَمَ أَبَا خَيْثَمَ uh, he, His name is mentioned that it's either Abdullah bin Khaythama or Malik bin Qais, one of the two. Rasulullah says it said, be be Aba Khaysama, meaning, Ya Allah, let this be Abu Khaysama. Because Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he wanted this as well. You know, he, despite being so busy, his, his spiritual attention was on certain people. And he's like, why are they not here? So he saw Abu Khaysama, he's like, I hope this is Abu Khaysama. 30, 40,000 people, and yet he's noticing Abu Khaysama is in here. فَإِذَا هُوَ أَبُو خَيْثَمَا It was Abu Khaythama al-Ansari. وَهُوَ الَّذِي تَصَدَّقَ بِصَاعِ التَّمَرِ حِينَ حِينَ لَمَزَهُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ And he's the person that donated one date in the path of Allah because he didn't have anything during the preparation for the Battle of Tabuk, and the Munafiqun would make fun of him. This is also in the end of Surah, of the 10 Jews in Surah Tawbah. They started to say, um, uh, you know, they used to make fun of him and say that, you know, you're, you're not giving anything what is one date going to do with him what happened is he also stayed back for whatever reason and he was sitting one day and eating and he thought I am relaxing and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba they are going through hardship I don't care immediately he left and he went out in their direction he met them on their return right or he met them there late but even then, at least he made it. So Rasulullah sallallahu was happy with him. Okay? قَالَ كَعْبٌ فَلَمَّا بَلَغَنِي أَنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَدْ تَوَجَّهَ قَافِلًا مِنْ تَبُوكْ حَضَرَنِي بَأْسِي He said, then when it reached me that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was returning from Tabuk, great sadness 
and regret overcame me. فَتَفِقْتُ أَتَذَكَّرُ الْكَذِبِ So I began to think, what lie can I make up? وَأَقُولُ بِمَا أَخْرُجُ مِنْ سَخَطِهِ What can I say so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam won't be upset with me tomorrow? غَدًا Because what happened is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam basically he found out he's right outside of Medina, he's gonna come tomorrow, right? So he's thinking, what should I say, what should I say, what should I say? So that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam won't be upset with me. وَأَسْتَأَ وَأَسْتَعِينُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ بِكُلِّ ذِي رَأْيٍ مِنْ أَهْلِي And I sought assistance for this from all of the intelligent people in my family. We'll stop here and we'll continue inshallah next week from what happens when Ka'ab radiyallahu an meets Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What happens? What were the consequences of him not coming? Inshallah we'll go over all of that next week. Wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillah. Jazakallah kumna khayyar. Jazakallah.